All right, let's go ahead and get started. I see lots of people are joining. Welcome everyone to day two of Distributed. We're so glad you're here. Hope you were able to join yesterday. And if not, all of those recording replays will be um, in the replay tab and hop in by the end of the day today. We can go back and watch them and um, enjoy all the great sessions we have. So we have another great session right now with Simon Wardley. Simon Wardley is the creator of Wardley Mapping, a great mapping tool. Um, and he is going to share his is wisdom with everyone. So um, just a reminder to place your Q&As in the Q&A tab and Simon will reserve some time at the end to answer those. And if you have any questions um, after the replay, you can also add those and he'll come back in and answer them. So without further ado, Simon, if you wanna take it away. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and thank you. And what a wonderful introduction as well. I've added on, I uh, put into chat the link to the mirror board. So the way this is going to work, I've got a uh, basic presentation introduced to the concepts of mapping. Uh, and then I want to get into um, talking about some of the research that I'm doing. But before I can do that, we need to go through some, some exercises. Uh, so I've put those in the mirror board. We're going to go through those. Uh, they're fairly short. Uh, and hopefully we'll get this all done in now 29 minutes. Um, but it's going to be fairly fast paced. And so, so we'll, we'll see how we go. And I will come back and try and answer any questions you've got. So the first thing I'm going to do is share a screen. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's just go over here, full screen mode. Um, situation normal, everything must change. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Um, thumbs up, somebody? Uh, yes, works, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the origin of how I got into mapping. Uh, then I'm going to talk about maps. I'm going to talk about patterns, which will take me into the whole space of research. Uh, so for me, this is a bit of a long journey. I, I started this back in 2004, 2005. I started my interest of mapping, started there. I started mapping in 2005. Uh, when I was working for this company, uh, for Tango, online photo service, about 16 different lines of business, uh, very successful, profit, very profitable, uh, had a problem, uh, the CEO. The CEO of the company was completely clueless. Uh, they were making stuff up as they went along. And I know this because I was the CEO. I mean, I used to come up with wonderful vision statements like uh, 2003, our strategy is customer focus. We will lead an innovative effort in the market through our use of agile techniques. We were big adopters of extreme programming and open source. Uh, but to be blunt, I would literally pinched those words from other companies and just changed the order in a few other bits. I mean, that was the level of my strategic ability. I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. But nonetheless, we were, we were uh, uh, growing. But this started to really bug me. And so I read every strategy book I could find, was getting nowhere, ended up in a bookshop in London, talking to the bookseller. And she asked me, had I ever read Sun Tzu's The Art of War? And I said, no. So she persuaded me to buy two different versions of the book, because uh, A, she's a good bookseller, and B, they're all translations, so they're all subtly different. And I'm grateful for that, because in the reading of the second version, I noticed the pattern. Sun Tzu talked about five factors that mattered in competition. Have a purpose, a moral imperative. Uh, second, understand the landscape you're competing in. Then understand the climactic patterns or the heavens, how the landscape is changing. Then you get into doctrine and principles of organization. And then you get into leadership and gameplay. And this overlapped with something the mad major John Boyd called the OODA loop. So it's used in uh, military circles and now in political circles, unfortunately. The first O of OODA is to observe the environment. And that's what landscape and climactic patterns are about. Then you orientate yourself around the space. That's what principles doctrine are about. Decide where you're going to act and then you act. And so it's a cycle. And at the heart of this are two whys. The why of purpose, like uh, I want to win the game of chess. And the why of movement, which is should I move this piece or that piece? And so this was about 2005 and suddenly, you know, strategy sort of was starting to make a bit more sense to me. And I really focused on the importance of understanding the landscape, the environment that you're competing in. 
And so that got me into military history, uh, and I used to read all about these wonderful battles. Uh, Thermopylae, uh, this is Themistocles, ancient politician, Greek general. Uh, Thermopylae, the Persians were invading, about 170,000 Persians. They decided to block off the Straits of Artemisium, force them along a narrow pass into a place called Thermopylae, where a small number of troops could defend against a larger force. Uh, there were 4,000 Greeks, including uh, 300 Spartans, and that's where we get the story from. And I, I was just fascinated by this use of maps. And I looked at my organization, I, I was like, how are we just making decisions? And I was using something called a SWOT diagram. That stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So I, I made a SWOT diagram of this battle. So strengths, a well-trained Spartan army, a high level of motivation not to become a Persian slave. Uh, weaknesses, the ethos uh, might stop the Spartans turning up, a truckload of Persians are turning up. Opportunities, get rid of the Persians uh, and also get rid of the Spartans. We're Athenian, we actually hate the Spartans. And the threats, the Persians get rid of us and the Oracle says a really dodgy film might be produced in a few thousand years. So I simply um, put those next to each other, uh, map with position and movement and the sort of magic framework of a SWAT and ask the question, what would you use to communicate and determine strategy in battle? And I looked at it and it was like, obvious I'd use a map. So what was I doing in my business? In my business, I was using a SWOT diagram. So um, by the way, sorry if there's noises going on around the place. We, uh, hopefully the microphone will cut that out. It's uh, lots of construction work in the area. Um, so I, I, I looked at this and I thought, well, you know, I'm using these magic frameworks. I really need to use some sort of map. And so that's what got me into the subject of maps. So the first thing I did is I told everybody, send me whatever maps we've got. And people sent me loads of maps, mind maps, business process maps, systems maps. And this is a systems map for um, one of our lines of business. And so I simply looked at one of the components. This is for an online photo service. And one of the components here is CRM. And I thought, right, I'm just going to move that across the map. How has that changed? And the answer is it hasn't. Well, that's a bit odd. Because if I take a geographical map and I take Australia and I say move it next to the UK, that map definitely has changed. So why hasn't it changed here? And the answer is that it's not a map, it's a graph. In fact, everything we had in business, uh, customer journey maps, mind maps, business process maps, all had one thing in common. None of them were actually maps. They were all graphs. Now, to understand the difference, uh, very simply, uh, the three images at the top are all graphs and they're all identical. Uh, they're three places in the UK connected by two roads. The three images at the bottom are all maps and they're completely different. The difference between a map and a graph is in a map, space has meaning, which is why they're good for understanding landscapes, whether it's territorial landscapes or political landscapes or cultural landscapes or economic landscapes. So graphs, much better than not having a graph, but they are not maps. For a map, you've got to have some mechanism of understanding the landscape and space has to have meaning. So I started thinking about this, how do I do this in business? Well, the three characteristics you need is an anchor, such as magnetic north, position of pieces, this is north, south, east or west of that, and something known as consistency of movement. So if I'm going north, I'm going north. If I'm going south, I'm going south. So I need anchor, position, and movement. So I start off with my business, but I often show the example of a tea shop because I like tea shops. So what's my anchor going to be? I'm going to have the uh, the business and uh, who hopefully uh, wants to make revenue from selling cups of tea and the public who hopefully want to drink cups of tea. So I'm going to have two anchors here. I'm going to have the business and I'm going to have public and they're connected by the cup of tea. All right. Now, a cup of tea has needs. It needs um, tea. It needs a cup. It needs hot water. Hot water needs kettle. It needs power. So, uh, well, a kettle needs power in order to take cold water and turn it into hot water. So what I've got now is an anchor and a chain of needs. And position is described in this chain of needs through how visible the components are. So the further you go down the chain, the less visible the components are. So... So a member of the public, the cup of tea is very visible to them, but the power used to heat the kettle, that's quite far removed. 
All right, we've got anchor and position, and this is a graph, but it's still not a map because I'm missing that consistency of movement. Well, fortunately, all of these nodes are stocks of capital and they evolve through a common pattern. You start off with the genesis of the novel and new, custom built examples, products and rental services, commodity and utility services. So now what I've got is anchor, position and movement. And this is a map. And so what I'm actually now doing is I'm now exposing my assumptions about this space to you in a way that you can look at and challenge. Now, normally when we draw these maps, we draw them, uh, we normally put a value chain on the left hand side. It, this is just scaffolding, just to give a reminder you're going up and down a value chain. And we normally just, you know, draw a line at the bottom to say, you know, just a reminder that this is evolution. These aren't really axes, these are scaffolding, just to give you a better sense of direction and position. All right, now I said, you can challenge my assumptions. So you might look at that map and go, why have you got kettle in custom built? Surely it should be more of a commodity. And that's a good question to, to ask. One of the problems we have in business is that most businesses um, are run by stories. And unfortunately, we have an entire industry which tells everybody that to be a great leader, you've got to be a good storyteller, which means when I give you a story, if you challenge my story, you're actually saying you're not a great leader. And so I get very defensive and all this sort of stuff. By getting my assumptions down on a map, I can challenge the map without challenging the person. I can say, for example, why is the castle in custom built? Why is it not more of a commodity? Okay, so these sorts of maps, and that's a tea shop, uh, just to give you an example, have been used uh, up in space in terms of um, a consortium between Planet and uh, NASA and others. Um, they used uh, mapping in terms of building this satellite all the way to things like UK government. Yeah. Uh, we saved hundreds and hundreds of millions uh, by simply mapping out spaces and challenging why it is we are doing stuff. All right, so now this leads me into the area of patents. Uh, and to explain that, I'm going to use a UK government example. Um, and the um, one I'm going to use is a big heavy engineering project, high speed rail, HS2. So this is James Finlay, the CIO, former CIO of HS2. And back in 2012, we needed to build the railway in a virtual world. And the reason for doing this is fairly simple. It's cheaper to dig up a virtual world and go, whoops, we've got that wrong, than it is the English countryside. So you build it all in a virtual world and you find out what works, what doesn't work before you start digging up the countryside. Anyway, here's James's problem. This is the systems graph for building HS2 in a virtual world. And James's issue was, how do I manage this? Uh, typically in government in those days, we used to go, let's outsource it all. And we used to break it into simple lots. Like we'd have lot one engineering, because that's engineering stuff. We put that together. Lot two user experience. We'll put all that stuff together and lot three back. And we'd separate these off into contracts. And invariably they would fail horrendously with massive cost overruns and all this sort of stuff as well. So what James did is he sat down. Uh, and this was back in 2012 uh, on a Sunday lunch. And he simply um, uh, drew a map of the environment. And so this was a map uh, and he sent it to me and said, Simon, how do we manage this? So I looked at it, tied it up a little bit and said, well, um, I have faced this problem before. Um, because when you look at a map, all the components are evolving from left to right. We know they go from Genesis to custom to product to commodity. And what we discovered back in 2006 was that agile in-house development was extremely good on the left-hand side, because um, on the left-hand side, where it's this uncharted space, it's constantly changing, it's the genesis, uh, you want to reduce the cost of change. But on the right-hand side, when it's become more industrialized, more commodity, you don't want to reduce the cost of change. In fact, you want to reduce deviation. So Six Sigma works better in outsourcing. And in the middle, where you're basically learning between these two areas, you're all about, you know, you know focusing on learning and reducing waste. So lean, so think about things like Scrum and MVP, that works best in the middle. So very simply, it was, you know, that's what you do. 
outsource the stuff on the right, um, you uh, build with lean or buy off the shelf products in the middle and uh, the stuff on the left hand side build in house with agile techniques. And so this is a principle known as use appropriate methods. And so when we talk about agile, there's two types of agile. There's using agile, as in using extreme programming, which you're doing on the left hand side. And there's being agile, which is using appropriate methods, because if you try to use agile, extreme programming across the whole lot, it wouldn't work as uh, same with Six Sigma. If you tried that, the other way doesn't work either. Or it's sure it, it can work, but it's just very much, much uh, uh, less effective. And so by simply doing this, uh, they ended up in the front of the public accounts committee delivering way ahead of schedule, way under budget. And that's a very basic lesson learned from mapping. Now, if I um, go back to the original systems graph and we take that lot one engineering and we put that into a mapping format, there it is, lot one engineering, I can tell you this contract's failed before we've even signed the paperwork. And the reason for that is fairly simple. Um, the bits on the right we can define, so be efficiently treated in a contract. The bits on the left we can't define. So whatever we write in the contract will always incur excessive change control costs. And that's just, that's typically normal. Uh, there are many, many, many patterns which we learn from mapping. And the way we do it is pre-mortem challenge. So we put the map together, we challenge why we're doing stuff, and then we go and do stuff. And then we do post-mortem learning with the same map. So this is where we go. This is what we thought would happen. This is what we learned. And as I said, there's many patterns. There's about 30 climactic patterns useful for anticipation of market changes. Uh, there's about 40 uh, bits of doctrine uh, useful for organizing uh, structures, uh, entire models of organization. And there's about 100 different forms of gameplay, all contextually specific. Um, which are useful for telling over industry, over industry. You'll, you'll find examples of this in, there's lots of books on this stuff. Uh, AWS as a, Amazon Web Services as a wonderful book. Uh, it's, I think it's its second ever book it published, which is Reaching Cloud Velocity. You'll find 17 pages of my mapping in there, including a particular model called ILC, which um, is quite effective at decimating industries, but there we are. Anyway, so I want to talk about the research, uh, which has got about 200 people involved. Um, but to do so, we're going to go now to the mirror board. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing just for a second. I'm just going to close this down. Let's put the link up again to the mirror board in the chat. So I want you to come and join me there. Uh, I'm just going to move this over. Hang on a second, almost there. I'm just opening up my mirror board app. All right, so I will also share my screen as well, um, only because for those of you, yeah, for whatever reason, have not got access to the, or can't, maybe you're on the phone, um, or, or whatever reason, uh, it, it's just easy for everybody to see it as well. But do come and join me on the mirror board because I will need uh, some people Oh, I've got 22 already. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Um, I'm going to bring you all to me. The first thing we're going to do is I just want to do that tea shop example, just to get everybody sort of familiar with the idea of mapping. So the way you do it, it's fairly simple. You talk about who are the users, uh, what are their needs? You might go public, tea, business, its need is to make revenue. Then you start by drawing out a chain. This is a graph. So public needs tea, needs tea, needs hot water, needs a variety of tea. Hot water needs cold water, kettle, kettle needs power. And we might go, oh, look, look, we got the business. So we're gonna bring the business in here, right? We're gonna say they want a revenue. So we're just gonna simply click those. Revenue comes from selling, you know, cups of tea, but we've only got tea, we haven't got cups on there. Well, we better put that cups in at some point uh, we've got to put some milk in possibly something along those lines right so very simply uh, then what happens is once you've done that hang on a second do then we start transforming to a map now we might go this particular chain it's all commodity components we still have to go right where where is business What's special about a tea shop? Not really anything much. So we'll put that in commodity. Revenue, pretty much commodity. Okay, milk. Oh, I'm going to put milk as, oh, that's pretty much a commodity. Have we got cup in this one? That's good, right? Somebody's 
where you put cap in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, uh, oh, let's have a look, three minutes. We'll make it, yeah, three minutes. Add some more things to the map. Uh, all I want you to do is think about what else is involved in a tea shop and grab the post-it notes, put them down uh, and ask yourself the question, how evolved are those components? Genesis, is it something novel and new, never created before? Have uh, we got custom built examples? Or is it more product? Is it commodity or utility? I see we've got some people already adding. Good. Sugar, yeah. Sweetener, yeah. Uh, the shop itself, yeah, it would be a good idea to have thought about a shop as well. I miss that one. Uh, tea, tea bags, uh, advertising. That's a that's a that's a good idea. Maybe, maybe we should tell people that we've actually got a, a tea shop rather than just putting it together and uh, uh, cleaning products. It would help actually be clean the tea shop. Spoons, yeah, miss that one completely. Humans. Ah, somebody to actually serve and maybe we should use fair trade suppliers okay uh, maybe we want to connect that up to advertising and mention the fact that uh, uh, we're going to use fair trade suppliers a payment system that's a really good idea point of sale payment system because we want to create revenue so how are we going to get revenue and of course uh, we don't want to be arresting our customers for running out of the shop and stealing our tea uh, food yeah and maybe they want cake or something maybe it's not just Okay, uh, loose leaf scones. Okay, uh, advertising signage, right? Advertising, I see we've got advertising up here as well. We've got advertising signage. I'm gonna argue, you know, I'm gonna drag advertising. I think there's nothing special about advertising. We all sort of understood, so I'm gonna just like drag it over and connect it up there. Of course, you might disagree and. You know, this again is us exposing our assumptions about a space on that space. Lights, okay, sweetener, payment collection. I'm going to drag payment collection down a little bit. Um, I'm going to say payment collection again, point of sale, nothing really special about that, just the till. Uh, we're connected up to revenue. Uh, the shop itself, seating. Yeah, again, you know, I'm going to bring shop up here, maybe because the public wants a tea, but they're also after maybe somewhere to rest, or maybe some Wi-Fi, something along those lines. Hygiene ratings, good. Okay, a retail permit. Humans, tea events. Ah, oh, our own tea conference. Okay. Well, we can we we can sort of link that into or we'll do a uh, online tea tastings, some sort of extravaganza, scones and food. I'm going to say uh, probably a little bit more. Come on! Oh, but time's up. But nonetheless, you know, you can see already we can you know we're talking about something like a tea shop, and all of a sudden we can all put different perspectives on this space and add it to this map. All right. So let's do another quick example. Uh, this is to do with robots. So let me drag you all to where I am. Hidden for now, let's unhide this. Okay. Uh, this is an insurance company. This is 2010 uh, to 2011. Sorry. Uh, they need some compute. They order server. Server goes into goods in. They had to modify Mount Racket. There's a bottleneck in their process flow. They came up with a plan to invest in robotics um, in order to speed the process up. Here's the figures. Cost of uh, per install failure. Every time they get a server wrong, likelihood of failure. And you can see from the robotics, well, they've got at the bottom, return investment calculation uh, of a sub one year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, in this case, a, 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 I'll do voting. I'm going to give you um, one minute, one vote, yes or no. I'll give you uh, one minute. A pretty quick one is to have a look at that and tell me whether you think yes or no. Is this a good investment? Uh, the investment of two million, uh, given it's got a return investment sub one year. All right, off you go. Everybody else uh, who's following, I'll wait, see how many people vote. You've got the process flow at the top. You've got a bottleneck. 
and you've got some figures here and uh, 15 10 we'll wait uh, let's see how many people think it's a good idea or not yeah I, I will vote how I think I'm going to say yes right looking at those figures I'm done uh 16 of 17 we're all done in for all right end session let's have a look how do we do 13 say yes four say no okay right so now we're going to do that exercise again because i was brought into this insurance company and asked to, um to have a look at this question and it was like you can't go in and say why are you going to use robotics they've got an entire plan about using robotics and everything else um, so they spent months working on this. Uh, but what I said is, can we quickly map it? So I'll bring you all to me. I asked them to map it. Lots of um, sort of, we're not sure about this, but uh, yeah, they spent 15 minutes and they mapped it. User needs compute. They put compute in product. The order server. Server, they put in commodity. Uh, goods in, very commodity. They put rack. I need a rack that's custom built. Mount, modify. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute to ask, put any questions that you have in that little grey box next to it. Any questions you want to ask on the map, all right? Okay, the rack, by the way, is uh, obviously a space for, um, uh, well, you know, they need servers, they need to mount them in racks, you know, they hold all these servers together. But, you know, we've already got there, um, literally 15 minutes, and um, it was uh, to write the map, and then I was able to ask the question which somebody's asked, which is, why custom racks? And the answer is, is because they'd already, the, al always used custom racks. Um, they had a company which actually make racks for them. And so I asked, what are the modifications you're making to servers? Well, servers didn't fit in their racks, so they had to take new cases off, uh, cases off, drill new holes, add new plates in order to get them to fit their racks. And uh, this is why they needed robotics. And so within a few minutes, somebody in the room uh, simply went, you know, why are we using, well, why aren't we using standard racks? That makes no sense at all for us to use custom built racks. Um, we should be using standard racks. And if they use standard racks, they don't need robotics. And of course, it wasn't long after that. Somebody said, what are we doing with our own data center and compute anyway? It's 2011. We should be using cloud. Um, now, all of that was possible because we had a, ma a map. As simple as that. Okay, I'm going to give you one other simple example. I'll give you one minute on this one. bring you all to me right this is an elvish car uh it's a self-driving car i've translated into elvish and what i want to do is it's a systems graph i want to ask you which bit should i outsource which bit should i buy a product which bit should i build your own but i won't because we're so close on time i will just take you to this bit this is the map for the same self-driving car all written in elvish I will give you one minute to tell me which bits I should outsource, which bits I should buy a product, which bits I should build your own. Oh, and you do that by simply dragging these. These You can just drag these squares across to wherever you need, right? Good, right, well, you can see you're doing it already. You've already been poisoned by mapping. You're outsourcing the stuff on the right, off the shelf products in the middle. On the left-hand side, you're learning to build your road. Well, that was easy. So for your perusal, these are the most basic patterns. And I use these with these research groups 
to map out entire industries. Uh, for example, this is, um, and you can read this in your, your own leisure, um, and this stuff is all online, it's all Creative Commons. This is where we're mapping out, we're currently mapping out 12 different industries. This is the financial industry, where we map through things like cryptocurrency, risk management, uh, all the way to uh, financial supply chains, and then do comparisons between where the map tells us is important and where analyst tells us important. And what we find is there is a huge difference. Anyway, this is all public. Um, I will leave the presentation on here. I'll leave some links. If you've got questions, I'll come back and answer those. I know we're at the top of the hour. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you find that useful. Uh, maps are a fairly simple process, but it can save you a lot of trouble. Thank you. Gosh, wonderfully kind comments. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So McCall, do we switch off here or will it automatically shut down or do we keep going or? <laughs> keep going all day. No. Oh, great. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just need to um, click leave and then we'll be done. Okay. Thank uh, you so much. It was awesome. I learned a lot, actually. <laughs> Okay, well, I, 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 you know, people can the thing about the maps and the thing about the research is I, I have 200 of people. We're doing really, we're looking into defense, agriculture, finance, construction. There are lots of complex maps here, which we are building of these industries to identify areas and patterns of change in investment and then using this. But of course, uh, you know, that stuff is fairly meaningless unless you understand a little bit of the basics. And you can't really learn until you've had a fiddle on a play, which right. is why we do the tea shop. I, I like the robot one and I love the speed at which the audience went, what are the racks custom built? Well, yeah. these people aren't daft. They'd spent six months working on this problem. But the thing is they were trapped by stories and past context and that's so normal. And so they were, you know, uh, it happens. I see this in industry, uh, uh, you know, time and time again, people focused on, on, on the wrong spaces and, and the business, uh, the methods one is just, you know, because you get a lot of this, let's Six Sigma everything or let's agile everything and neither work actually. Uh, you've got to learn to use them in the right spaces. Um, so you need all that basic stuff, but I want to at least give people a sort of a flavor. Um, did we have any questions by the way? I saw lots of chat. I don't see any in the Q and A. I think people ask their questions in the chat. So, there might be some that come up um, with the replays, but right now I think we're good. Good, right. Um, Thank well, you so much again. Oh, it was absolutely delight, absolute pleasure. And now we have completely run over. I hope I haven't made you late for something else. You need to go um, pick up your wee lad, don't you? Mm -hmm. You got to go pick up the wee lad. Oh, I, I do, I do, I do, <laughs> I do. I am looking at the uh, the clock over there. I've still got, you know five minutes or so <laughs> before I have to charge out of the house and everything else. Well, you'll, you'll know the alarm bells yeah. start going, but there we are. All right. In which case, um, I will say thank you ever so much. Absolute course, pleasure. Um, and uh, I will come sure, back. We'll be in touch and we'll do more together. Sounds good. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.